Is 24-bit recording better than 16-bit recordings? It has a complex answer, but let me try to oversimplify it for you. And the answer is no. Wait, don't abuse me already. Let me try to explain why I think so. The only real difference between a 24-bit recording and a 16-bit recording is something called the quantization noise. A continuous analog signal when converted to discrete digital voltage samples will introduce a certain approximation error called the quantization error. This error voltage is treated as a noise source and is output as the quantization noise. This noise is constant for a broad spectrum analog input like our audio signal and depends only on the bit depth of analog to digital converter. This noise difference is barely perceivable and rarely become a determining factor in real world situations. This noise creates a noise floor for the analog to digital converter which in turn determines the dynamic range of the converter. That is the separation between the possible maximum signal level and the minimum signal level it can sample before touching its own inherent noise floor. Theoretically, the dynamic range of various bit depths are 24-bit 144dB, 16-bit 96dB, 8-bit 48dB. But in practical situations, the noise floor is further increased by other components of the audio interface and hence the actual dynamic range values look as follows. A 24-bit Scarlett Solo has 105dB dynamic range. A 16-bit Behringer UMC22 has 84dB dynamic range. The 24-bit Scarlett Solo looks like a clear winner looking at the specs, but the dynamic range of 16-bit is adequate for all practical purposes, unless you have multiple mixing mastering steps. For simple purposes like voiceover recording, it has no considerable advantage. Let me expand. In real-world scenario, your interface's dynamic range is limited by your signal level. This is called the signal to noise ratio or SNR. This is further limited by your mic's SNR and also other external noise factors like cable noise plus preamp noise in case of dynamic mics and last but not least your acoustic noises. But let's leave that for the time being and consider an ideal situation without any acoustic noise or cable noise hypothetically of course and only see how the mic's SNR limits the two bit depths. The sensitivity and self-noise specification of a mic determines its SNR. A good condenser mic like Newman U87 will give you a signal-to-noise ratio of about 84 dB, which is owing to its high sensitivity and low self-noise. That means if you record speaking close to the mic utilizing the mic's optimum sensitivity, the noise flow due to the mic's self-noise will be about 84 dB below the signal level. With a gain set to give an input level of minus 18 dBFS, noise flow due to the mic will be at minus 102 dBFS. If it is connected to a Scarlett Solo interface, this SNR will be retained as such, since ideal case, this interface can accommodate up to 0 to 105 dB range. If it is connected to a Behringer UMC22, this SNR will be reduced, since ideal case it can only accommodate up to 0 to 84 dB range. So the noise floor of the interface being above the noise floor of the mic setup, the new noise floor will be at minus 84 dBFS and the effective SNR will be reduced to 66 dB. Again the 24-bit Scarlett Solo is a clear winner, right? Now compensating a little on the headroom, let's record at minus 8 dBFS instead of minus 18 dBFS. Using a Samsung Z01 which has a lesser SNR of 76 dB which is owing to its high sensitivity but high self noise. That means if you record a signal speaking close to the mic utilizing the mic's optimum sensitivity, the noise flow due to the mic's self noise will be about 76 dB below the signal level. With the gain set to give an input level of minus 8 dBFS, for Samsung Z01 the noise flow due to the mic will be at minus 84 dBFS level. If it is connected to a 24-bit Scarlett Solo interface, this SNR will be retained as such, since ideal case this interface can accommodate up to 0 to 105 dB range. If it is connected to a Behringer UMC22 interface, this SNR will be retained as such since ideal case it can accommodate 0 to 84 dB range. SNR of both recordings are same, 76 dB. Both the interfaces are able to accommodate and use the full SNR of the mic provided we set the gain to a higher level of at least minus 8 dBFS. It's a tie now. Please note these mic specs are approximated to the maximum. The actual SNR values of both these mics will be lesser. Please check the spec sheets of corresponding models for actual SNR measurements. Okay. Too much talking. What did I prove? That 16-bit interface has enough dynamic range to provide room for an SNR of 76 dB without any worry. Now let us see why this SNR is important and how it affects playback. 
SNR rating of 60 dB is an audiobook standard recommendation. The perceivable difference between two sounds at difference of 60 dB will be like trying to hear a whisper while working a lawnmower. It is clear that the 16-bit interface can accommodate 60 dB SNR without even any headroom compensation, giving much separation between the signal level and the effective noise flow. Now, is there a possibility that the noise 60 dB below the signal will be audible? Movie theaters have a loudness specification of 85 dB SPL standard. If you play your speech recording with an SNR of 60 dB in an 85 dB SPL system with your dialogues playing at 75 dB SPL, your noise will effectively be at 15 dB SPL. The ambient noise of a quiet movie theater will be about 20 dBA. That means noise of your recording will be below the ambient noise of a movie theater and won't be audible. Prolonged exposure to sound above 85 dB SPL will affect your hearing badly. This is the reason why your phone always wants you when you put full volume for your earphone. Since most earphones can play an effective loudness of 100 dB SPL since they are so close to your ears, so when you crank up your earphones in noisy outdoors, be warned. Hence the SNR of 76 dB itself is a luxury and not much of practical use in playing back your voiceovers. Being that said, 24-bit recordings do have advantages. For example, when your speech itself have an unusual dynamic range or you have multiple mixing and mastering steps involved or if you are recording at lower levels for specific needs and want to keep the noise floor as low as possible, etc. Which we don't really need to worry about for our purpose. Voiceovers seldom have huge dynamics in the spoken words, so we can be sure to have a clear audio if we keep all external noise contributions below 60 dB of our signal level. Get a good directional mic which doesn't pick up much acoustic noise and also has an SNR of about 70 dB, a quiet room, good quality cables and set your amplifier gain to record good signal levels. Speaking loud enough and close enough to your mic also gets you good signal levels and also increases the effective SNR of the mic, which the preamp does not since it amplifies both signal and noise alike. If acoustic noises and other component noises are present heavily, SNR is reduced and make the extra available dynamic range pointless. Thank you for watching guys, take care.